peace and blessings. Okay, I got to move back. I was like, I don't know if anyone's even going to be on, but apparently you are on. So, hey, let's see, up or down? What do we need more of? So, I'm in my beauty room, and I wanted to actually uh, show you my new nighttime routine. So, someone early, first of all, this is Lisa Marie Goodson of the Blackberry Beauty Transformative Academy, Ancient African Wisdom for the Minor Sister. Good evening. Yes, it's 2019, and I'm doing things a little differently. I'm really constructing my so-called beauty room, and this is my little vanity area. And so, I'm playing with different things with my face, and I want to show you more things, and I want to actually start really dedicating my... Uh, uh, time in 2019 to uh, even spending more time on my self-care and that's for me my skin and my face and showing you the different things that I do since I've incorporated a more of a balanced life where I you know go out with friends eat at restaurants and eat good foods as well how am I going to maintain and keep that going right so the first thing that I say to prepare your skin at night and it's the first thing actually you do in the morning as well Hey, thumbs up for being up this late, y'all. Thank you so much, is you want to drink your lemon water. I keep these. I actually take, I got these bottles off. Thank you so much, first of all, for those that supported me. Uh, someone bought me six. It was a six-bottle set. They're 12-ounce uh, bottles, and I just fill them with water, and then I put lemon slices in them. That's it. And the lemons, get some good organic lemons because the juice just goes so far. So I definitely, I had like a, a glass of wine today, actually. So mm. so this is how I hydrate before I go to bed. Now I'm going to say this. Don't drink so close to bed because, you know, you'll be going up peeing all night. And that's not going to be fun. Let me just see who's here. Six people, thank you for thumbs up. I'm so excited. Yo, these get ready with me and these go to night and nighttime routines. Like this is so big for me. I feel so excited right now. So thank you for supporting me in this newness. So, uh, so yeah, so I drink water uh, before I go to bed. But I mean, like sometimes because I'll, I'll go in bed and I'll read. And so when I say before I go to bed, before I actually, you know, get in the bed, but not really go to sleep. So I wanted to show you something. I wanted to show you how I do this kind of scarf, because this is another type of scarf. This is from my girl, Shanika Bedford. And Shanika and her husband, they have a website, and it's called Heads Up Headgear. And uh, it's the ball, right? This is just one way. This is not usually the way I do it, but this is what's coming out now. And I just want to cover my head while we do the removal. While we do the removal of the makeup. Let me see now. Now, you know I got a makeshift thing here, but we're going to go. Okay, yeah. While we do the removal of the makeup. Okay, is that cool? So, so yeah. So, now I have this. I put this fancy lipstick on. I didn't have it earlier, but it's called, let's look at it. It's called Clap Back, Rihanna, Clap Back. So uh, it's really pretty and it's really dark blue. It looks black to some, but you can see it's blue and I love it. But I find it, because it's not, quote unquote, the vegan natural makeup, I find it to be a tad bit hard to come off. So I just, you know, remove it with, this is actually toilet paper. Uh, this is toilet tissue. Uh, that I'm using, uh, uh, everything, my go-to for everything, if I really want to get things off and they're taking a while, is to put shea butter. Now, the shea butter I have is old shea butter. It's actually, I say old meaning it's from Africa, and we're going to put the light going back to them. It's from Africa 7 Beauty. It's from Africa 7 Beauty, and so it is a shea butter, and it's melted because it was very warm in the bathroom, but... I'll put a little bit of that on just to help it out a bit. And um, so I say, you know, when I was younger, oh my gosh, I used to go to bed. That's why I was going out, hanging out, 17, 18, 19, you know, 20 or 20s. You partying, you going to sleep with your makeup on. Like, oh my God, don't do that, y'all. Don't go to sleep with your makeup on. It make your skin terrible. You have all kinds of pores, those open pores. I mean, you could have it without doing that too, but it's just not good for your skin. And especially when I was a youngster, I mean, vegan makeup, it was not even invented. If it was, it wasn't in this country. So yeah. 
So, see, I got some on the top. <laughs> this is real life. So, basically, you know, being nice to your skin and making sure you just get everything. So, that's what I do for my lipstick. I use tissue. And if I need to go a little deeper, I'll use shea butter. My shea butter has some other oils in it, probably castor oil, uh, maybe jojoba oil, some other oils as well. Okay. All right, y'all. So now we're going to talk about, remember, we got this, this uh, Too Faced, right? This Too Faced mascara that, excuse me, y'all, that you all heard me raving about and uh, apparently better than sex mascara waterproof at that waterproof at that so how i removed that is very similar i actually am going to use my daughter had these when she came these makeup wedgies cosmetic wedgies i know you are all familiar with these so i've never used them so i'm going to actually use them to take this off so I'm going to do that, you know, just get that. I got to cross that, that, that little shape, but let's just see, does it work to wipe this stuff off? It's, yeah, it's definitely coming off, but you can see it's still there. I'm thinking it's this better than, you know, because you don't want to rub your eyes too much, too. Is this better than the the cotton ball? So now let me, let's do the cotton ball. And then a lot, sometimes I even use cotton rounds. The cotton rounds actually was the best, but I didn't have, well, you know what? Before I was using Pacifica, the vegan natural mascara, and that stuff is very, very easy to come off. But I say the cotton, the cotton is, uh, the cotton pad or, is way better. Cotton is way better, cotton ball. Way better, gets off way more. So I think this cotton balls, that's better than the wedgies. Y'all probably knew that, but I knew it there. So we're experimenting because this was like a piece of cake. It just came right off. So what I'm going to do, and I, you know what, y'all? I forgot when I went to Whole Foods. Remember, y'all? These are the Dollar Tree uh, cotton balls. I should have went. I, I wanted to go to, I went to Whole Foods, but I forgot to get. They have the organic cotton balls in Whole Foods, and I like those so much better. Oh, my God. It's more absorbent. You can feel if cotton, mm, non-organic or non-pesticide cotton, which is organic cotton, it has another feel. Even when you wear the organic cotton clothes, it has another feel. That's all that I can say is that it has another feel. So I'm taking this off now because remember, y'all, I use the cacao brow stuff, the cacao brow. Let me see. Do I still have the cacao brow? Yes. Remember earlier today, I told you about the Coco Kind Organic Full Brow Balm. It's uh, from, I uh, got it from Whole Foods. It's all organic, and it does. It has a slight brown tint, which is really nice. And I love it. It's nourishing. It's supposed to, you know, nourish, moisturize the eyebrows and actually thicken them as well. So they, that comes off really easy. Okay, so now that I got the eyes are all off, and yeah, you can see it, you know, yeah. Let's see. It's a little more. This stuff here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let me tell you what I what I'm really gonna get into now. And so now that I use now that I use my shea butter. So shea butter for me is a wonderful eye makeup remover. Or I say makeup in general because I mean my lipstick, my eyeliner, my mascara. So y'all gotta let me know, do y'all also, and let's drink some water, do y'all also use shea butter to remove your eye makeup? Thank you, or even your uh, your lipstick. And wait, y'all, we gotta make it a little because we talking about, you know, we going into our glamour, so. We got to, I learned this from my sexology course. We got to glam, we got to glam it up, glam up those features. And so, yeah, shea butter for the body is so excellent. Do y'all, I don't usually shea butter, hold on ladies, I don't want to drop this, okay. I don't usually shea butter before going to bed, but it would not be a bad thing to do. So, you know, getting that skin, right? That shea butter keeps your skin so soft. And it actually, like I said, it has a, a protection from the harmful rays of the sun. 
So you can also, you know, if you want to keep that skin really beautiful before going to bed, you know, you could rub a little shea butter in your uh, key areas that you love. So while you're taking it off your face, you could be, you know, putting it on, especially if you got some fragrant shea butter. So yeah, shea butters are definitely the bar. You want to go to bed with your hands all nice and soft. You want to, more importantly, you want to wake up. <laughs> you want to wake up with your hands all nice and soft. Isn't that right? So, you know, definitely, I mean, these are things that I realize that most of us want to do, or maybe some of us do before going to bed, things that our mothers used to do. Remember the, the pawns? Was it pawns? Pawns, right? Pawns, cold cream. Your mamas use that. You know, I feel like the shea butters are new pawns and all the stuff are well, old. <laughs> really, that's where everything comes from. So, yeah, I'm going to start. This is going to be part of my routine. See, we have we are discovering this together. Truly, we are. And so, but the thing that I brought you all here for was not just the removal of the little stuff, but what do I do for my skin? Since I don't wash my skin with soap at night, I do that in the morning. I do my masks in the morning. That's why tomorrow you're going to see a, a better morning routine especially now that I have my makeshift vanity that's about to be a real vanity. So I take my cotton ball again. I'm going to tell you about this. I know black owned company, Mitra's Grace uh, Rose Toner. And you see that's from me wearing glasses. You get those little spots. We're going to get rid of all that. But watch my transformation. Uh, Mitra's uh, uh, Grace Rose Toner, black owned company. I found them through... Uh, the za box. So what I do is I completely hold on. I I just wipe my face. I wipe my face with the toner and the cotton. Just imagine it was organic cotton. Just pretend. Pretend it's organic, and you will see if you you know there is dirt on here. And I don't want to you know scare you, but I want you to know that. At the end of the day, and for all you natural girls that don't wear makeup, this is one that's really for you because I'm not wearing foundation either. Our face, even though we don't wear makeup, is still dirty at the end of the day just from debris that got picked up from the end of the day. Now, I noticed my forehead, and I noticed all in here. I mean, I know I got to rub slowly. I noticed those areas not so much. Actually, no, that's the whole face. So this toner, remember this toner has a combination of witch hazel, rose oil, and rose water. And then they actually put rose, rose petals is actually on the bottom. That's what that is. So I, um, I've been really doing this and I've been really, you know, liking it. It's just, a, it's just revives me. And then it just smells so good. Do you know how good rose oil smells? Oh my God. I know rose oil is antibacteria, uh, anti-inflammatory. It's cooling. Like this is, this is if you don't have time to wash your face, don't want to. Like I would, I ordered several. I would carry this in my purse, and I was like, if I was at work and you wanted to go out to work and you wanted to give yourself, especially for the girls that just don't even wear makeup, you wanted to give yourself that clean, fresh, wash your face look. I would do this. So that's, like I said, especially for my non-foundational girls. Well, when I find a uh, vegan foundation, I haven't looked. When I find one, uh, that's the other side, y'all. Don't get scared. Okay. When I find one, uh, a vegan foundation, you know, I would actually get one because I would love to test some vegan stuff out because I want to know more about vegan, and I think a lot of you also do as well. So... There you go. Okay, so my face is way more cleaner. You see, you know, there's a clean, smells good. There's a glow going on, like I'm feeling my skin. Yes, that looks like, you know, I'm ready to go outside. But what I do is I got this oil and the tag, the, the label came off, but I got this oil also from the Zy Box, And I think it's called Silk Bee or Silk Bee or Bee Silk. See the bee silk or so something. It's a black owned company. It's an oil I have forever. It has spearmint oil, essential oil in it. And there's some other various oils. I know olive oil is one of the base. I've had this forever. This is my moisturizer. This is what I actually use in the morning as well. It's light. That's why I like it. It's a shea butter. Back in the days, it was making me just too, a little too shiny. It was just 
too thick for me to shea butter. And this is a lighter oil. Like I said, you could wear it to bed like I'm going to do now. Or you could, uh, this is what I wear when I finish my face. Now, I haven't been spritzing my face with my Arm and Aloe Vera spray. And, like, I haven't been really doing that. I haven't been doing my masks every day. You know, just going through, the, you know, changing atmospheres, but not really changing the things that work. You know, I still got to make some things for my face. So I'm not changing the things that work. I'm just, you know, getting into the groove, acclimating to the groove. So this is a fresh face, ready to go. So what I would do now is either I would, and probably I would not, I would either finish this water, which I'm going to have a swig right now. Yes. And then I, this is when I'm good. When I'm good and I'm, I'm getting back. That's why I'm doing this with y'all. Because see, me doing these go, my nighttime routine with you, first of all, I can learn about myself, my skin. It's going to make me have to do it because I want to come to you, you know, every night with my skin routine, seeing if it's changed, what I'm doing differently, things I've noticed. And it makes me stay disciplined. So this is sesame oil and sesame oil. For me, this is what I oil pull. When my teeth become like they're moving, because I got a big space in my teeth of teeth that was extracted, never full. And so when you have a teeth that's missing, the other teeth will move around and compensate. That's so why my teeth get all crooked or my my old bite gets a little more protruding. It's because I'm not doing my oil pulling. My oil pulling, I promise you, it does, the, the gums come back and they tighten back in and they kind of move the teeth where it's supposed to go. Oil pulling is amazing and I used to do it every single night. Like I said, my, my routine is a little off because, you know, the first thing that I did, I think for me getting out of the marriage was I just wanted to let go of the routine for a while. So I'm allowing myself to get off the routine to discover and to create another routine. So I feel like that's what I'm doing. I'm creating another routine. And I love that. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it so much. So, um, but I'm still incorporating these things work. So I got to get back and be, you know, better at it. And I'm going to do that. So I would take about a teaspoon, tablespoon or less of this. And I'm going to gargle or swirl or gurgle, <laughs> uh, swish around uh, this in my mouth for 20 minutes. And then I spit it out. And then I use my toothbrush to put some uh, sea salt on or gargle with sea salt and just brush with a toothbrush. Anyway, I'm back to brushing, you know, making sure that I'm flossing every day, which I can do in bed while watching the YouTube. So I'm, I'm, I want to create a beautiful routine for my new place that I live in now, my 2019, and I want to do it with you. How does that sound? So this is, and this is me, you know, my face, like I said, we're coming for the comeback because I haven't been taking my long baths and all that stuff. So, you know, so thank you so much. So let me see. Let's see who was on and who is on. Uh, let's see. Okay, I can't do it that way. Okay, let's see. Hey, Layla. Hey, Jimmy Davis. Yo, you're very welcome. Hey, Joe's Natural Aces. Hey, Jayla. Oh, I finally caught a live way before it ends. Yay, I'm so happy. Hey, Jay Lux, thank you for the tip. I have shea butter, and now I use that to, yeah, to remove any lipstick. Yes, good. I use micellar water to remove my makeup. Micellar? I don't know what micellar water is, but it sounds pretty amazing. Joe says, I don't wear makeup, but I use shea butter as my face moisturizer. Exactly. Catherine says, hello, beautiful souls. Hello to you. Everyone press the like button. Thank you so much, Catherine Faulkner. I appreciate that. Uh, Joe says, hi, Catherine. Bibi says, is there any micellar water for less than $10? Okay, y'all know what this is. Okay. How can you explain how you clean your navel? How do I explain? Is that for real? Or okay, I don't know. Oh, and I gotta I want to do something with y'all tomorrow. I'm gonna do. So Jay Lux says, I'm sure there is the one I use is okay, good. Y'all talking to each other. Okay, I love coconut oil, but when I started using it as a face moisturizer, it broke me out badly. That's what people say. Coconut oil doesn't bother me, but I know it bothers other people. So yes. Uh Okay, so Jay Lux said they say coconut oil is not the best for acne-prone skin. So there you go if you already have it. Hey, Camila. Hey, Lakeisha. I found that out the hard way. Oh, yeah. I know some people have reactions to coconut oil. Another thing that I didn't do tonight that I'm going to do 
And maybe I'll do it at now. Let's see if I can find what I'm looking for. Hold on. You don't have to go like, I, I, girl, I'm going to get organized. It's going to be good. But for me, as an aging woman, uh, I get chin hairs. Yes, hold on. Here we go. I get chin hairs, right? Yes, I do. As a menopausal woman, for all my menopausal women, say Al. Okay, Al for real with all these damn hairs. And so what I want to do is put my lighting. The lighting is poor. You can see them hairs. Did I just get that out? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it's like, is she crazy? Is she? Yes, we got to get those hairs out. Those hairs are very important. Got to get the hairs off the chinny chin chin because it ain't cute. I mean, I know I'm sure I'm getting some too. I'm sure some of you probably go to, you know, the salons and get them, you know, waxed and, and threaded. And I did all that too. My thing grow back. I don't care if I go get it waxed, threaded. Mine's go grow back in the next hour. The next hour I hear it come in. Okay, definitely by the next day. It's like, really? You know, do I am I really going through if I got a hair situation? Now I know ladies, I don't know if this is y'all wouldn't do this on camera or not, but this is real life. And for the menopausal woman, this is what you might go through, young bitches. You might go through this. <laughs> Sorry, young ladies. Young ladies. You might go through this. The hormonal changes. You got hair on your chin. You got to get a, flea, a tweezer. That's what this is. Let me tell young women because y'all like, what the hell is they doing? Okay, you probably never saw this. It's called a tweezer. And a tweezer is used for more than just putting your eyelashes on, which I will find some vegan eyelashes to put on. Therefore, the hairs on your chinny chin chin. Well, no, that's <laughs> actually we used to use it to get like uh, what you call splinters or you yeah, have splinters in. But they're also good for plucking hair. I'm telling you. And sometimes the hair is microscopic. And then when you as you get older, wait. Nighttime story. You want to hear the nightmare? The nightmare is when you get older, they actually the hair turns gray. Then you have gray hair chin chin hair. This is the real stuff. And actually, <laughs> and actually, it's not really a nightmare, but you would want to check them because other people will. Nah, nobody ever tells you you got hair. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. But I was meaning to get them here. And some hairs, you can't, some hairs, you can't even, you can't see them. You just got to feel them. And can't nobody else see them too. But see, I get them. Because you feel them and then you place. Some of you going to be so good. You're going to know. You're going to be looking for I got like a hair that grows somewhere and here somewhere. I might have tamed that sucker. But you start knowing your hairs. You know, until you get a new one. You're like, oh, shit. Did I set a new hair on my chin? This is the reality of life uh, for some of us. And hopefully it won't be for you. Now, it's not, you know what? It's not the end of the world. It's a part of life. And just pluck them. Uh, or not. If you don't like them plucked, don't pluck them. Okay. <laughs> I think I gave. So I wanted to do that, you know, and I really, I think I can pluck probably every few days. I'm getting a new hair or, you know, hair that's growing. So my hair does grow. But I know that's hormonal. I know you're going to tell me about some herbs. I know somebody in here is going to tell me about some herbs. I can tell you. I know you are, but I'll wait and I'll use it and I'll, I'll figure it out. Oh, I can't read with this. Okay. <laughs> Mmm, yes. See, that's like a clean shave. That's real right there. Is that one? No. Yeah, that's a clean shave right there. Huh. <laughs> it's clean. Love it. All right. Let's see who's left. Uh Oh, yes. Vegan. I, I know I want everything vegan. She's like, I'm done. I'm done. Okay, so let me hear the natural. I knew it. How is your hair coming? It's coming along just fine. It's very, very nappy, very natting up. So, yeah, I'm going to talk about that with y'all. I want to have a question. I got to want discussion. Uh, Camille says, I get chin hairs and I'm not menopausal. Oh, okay, well, yeah, some people, I guess, just get it. It's a hormonal thing, though, so you may be hormonal in a different way because it's usually about hormones. Egypty says, I started to chin after babies. I had her turmeric remove them, my hair. Oh, okay, I will. I'm, I got some fresh turmeric root and the powder, so I will start incorporating uh, evening, yes, vegan eyelashes. I'm done, says BB Hunt. Child, they probably got some. I love it. The real stuff. Yes, laugh out loud. Yes, honey, those cheer, those hairs. How about some super duper mascara? Uh, 
Super Duper Mascara. Uh, I, I'm wearing Super Duper Mascara. I, don't know, I miss that Joy. I mean, BB. Joy says, yes, laugh out loud. You surely can tell when a new hair comes in. You be knowing it. You be like, oh, nah, is that a new hair? You know, so let me say this. So my hair, my hair, my hair, my beauty. Like, I want to just tell you stuff like, as far as your beauty, ladies, you have to love you where you are. You have to love you where you are. But other understanding that where you are is absolutely beautiful, no matter what somebody else thinks. So I'm growing my hair in a natty dreads. Natty for those means to really just let it come together. I may split it here and there, but overall, I'm gonna let it come together. The locks that many of you met me on uh, almost, it's almost been what, nine, 10 years that I've been on YouTube that I had when I first got in, those were actually more natty too, believe it or not. They were not twisted, palm rolled, nothing. Nothing like that. And y'all love them because when they get long, black folks like them. When they first coming in, black folks are like, what the hell are you doing with your hair, right? So I um, am growing at that, but not as much separation, but still I'm going to be separating. I'm just not going to be separating as much. Okay, so it's going to be very natty. So the reason why I don't show it as much is because... Most people ain't going to be ready for it. It's nappy as can be. It's gray. It's nappy. It's so real life, you know, so real life. And I want to represent that. Like, I'm okay with, that's why I'm coming on, like I said, with the bags and, the, you know, get ready with me and just showing you all of me because it's important to me and for important to you to know you're beautiful at all times, you know. I remember when I first started my locks, Oh, my God. Many, 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 many years ago. I, I cut my 11-year locks off eight years ago. So we're going on almost 20 years ago. Uh, and I would have, and this is when, though, at this time, at this time, uh, the salon locks, we call them, or y'all call them groom, uh, groom locks. Uh, there's another name you call it, but the twisted locks. Uh, they were coming in. There was locticians, and they were starting to come into Brooklyn and other places, you know. Uh, and so people were getting their locks done. And when people started getting their locks done, when people would see my locks with the roots was all not done and not tightened, they'd be like, you know, you could just do like, yeah, I could see you getting a palm roll or yeah, I could see you getting a da-da-da. People were always trying to make me feel like, oh, your hair is like, that don't look good, it don't look neat. Why don't you go get it neatened? You know, why don't you go... Until it grew long. When it grew long, then people stopped me on the street. A few people, though, beauticians was like, hey, I can get that top for you. Y'all got, nah, this, this is what's up. This is what's up. This is what I'm doing. You know, sometimes even your good friend or person next to you will not really see your beauty. They will not see your beauty. They will not see your beauty in every way. I, I want to embrace all of me. And my nappy here, watch, when it be, oh my God, it's just going to be so good. So it's really good. I don't, so anyway, I would say I don't really talk about it a lot because it's such a spiritual journey. It's almost, it's, it's, I'm so much on track with it that I don't even think about it. You know, I don't look at myself and go like, oh my God, I'm, I'm so bored. Oh my God, I couldn't wait that long, right? Oh my God, I would have to play my hair. I mean, I'm sure that time may come, but this would be my third set of locks. So at least I've been around the block a few times with it as well. It's like that thing that clicks, you know, to, draw, to grow natty dreads, to grow natty locks, you know, free form as some of y'all, you know, even say, Something else is going on. <laughs> I will I will just say that like something else is going on. There is a major transition, a major transformation that obviously is happening. So my hair is going to be my hair. Listen, you got to know you're beautiful and you got to be around people that know you. You know, it's funny, my friend tonight, she was saying, hey, y'all, you know, she said, I think I'm going to get, she was talking about how she might be getting a treadmill in her house. And I was like, yeah, go for it. That sounds cool. Because uh, I know, I, I had told her before, I, we had, I had a treadmill in the house and a couple of people I know that had a treadmill in the house. Treadmill is the darndest thing, right? It, it comes in, it's like this, the exercise equipment, who, who has ever done this? Tell me if it's you. Because I, I read that a lot of people's treadmills and equipment actually wind up on, like, Craigslist. Because I bought my daughter's treadmill on Craigslist. It was, like, brand new. You buy this stuff, and then somehow it becomes, like, the clothes hangers. Like, all your clothes just lie on it. 
And I know for me, that's what happened with my daughter's treadmill. And she begged me to have it. And I felt like, wow, you know, but it's okay. I, I'm, I, so she was like, yeah, I want to work out. I'm gonna get, I said, you should get a treadmill. That will work for you. And you are about that. And you should definitely do it. I definitely have learned. I'm not saying I don't know. I have another alternative, which I know I do. Um, or I'm not saying I'm not going to ever be in the gym, but I have, I certainly realized for me the going hard, hard, hard at 51 years old, I don't have the same thrill. It's not as necessary at 51. This is like, you know, plucking hairs, you know, like we're keeping this, it's real. It's not as necessary to go that hard for me at 51. I don't like the gyms and I probably won't go. I would rather dance or do yoga or just walk. Like I'm, I'm embracing my curves. I'm not trying to beat them into submission. I'm not trying to beat my ass into submission. I'm not trying to beat my hips into submission. I'm not trying to beat my thighs into submission. I'm not trying to, I got to work. I got to go to gym six, seven days a week to look that good. That's too much time. I don't have it. And at 51, you don't have it either in a lot of ways. And what I'm saying is go to the gym, but I feel like we just get so extreme about everything. Because, oh, my God, I can look better. I can look better. And God is like, God, girl, you look good now. So I'm allowing my curves to come in. I'm allowing that if my stomach is a little stomach. I'm 51 years old. I earned it. It's okay. And that it's actually normal. That protective stomach was act is there for a reason. And so I'm, I'm just not going for, I don't need to, I, I'm just being me, my, me that's all the ways that me express and me show up. And that's what, that's what's up for me. So I think I'm way less insecure now that I'm 51. I don't, I don't, I love me and I love the way I look. And so growing locks at 51 is probably going to be easier than growing locks at 27 or 29 when I had the last ones. Because I know that my wraps or the way you do your makeup or a certain outfit you wear are just a color that's going to still always make you pop. You got to feel beautiful here before any of this. So I, I'm learning. Like I know. So I'm not a gym person and I probably won't work consistently. I'm going to get bored. I'm going to get bored. And I don't want to spend that much time in a gym. It's just I need, I don't, it's not me. But it, if it's you, that's wonderful. But I will say find a healthy way to move your body, whether it's yoga for you or dance or some other form. Some of you like Zumba a lot. Whatever that thing is for you, find it. Love it. Like belly dancing. Uh, even African dance again, like any of that, like I can see myself doing even modern and jazz. Like I, I want to dance. Like I, I know dance. I just, I, I decided I was like, no, I now know for sure. I don't like the gym. I ain't about it. And as far as your body, you know, being beautiful. I mean, a lot of it is mental. A lot of it is, is, is how good you feel about yourself. I mean, Mona White in my uh, sexology course today, today reminded us that, but you know, I've been saying that for a while. Like as far as, I mean, I get that. It's about how you feel about yourself, how people are going to think you're sexy. So don't let nobody convince you that if you're growing your locks and you're doing it in a natty way, don't let nobody convince you. Oh. Oh my gosh, my daughter's got some things on campus. I'm going to give her a call. All right, anyway, love yourself. Love yourself so much. Oh my God, my daughter, let me go. You know what, y'all, my daughter just called. I'm going to call her right now. I love you, ladies, so much. Thank you for the getting ready with me or to go to sleep with me or my nighttime skin routine. And I will see you in the morning. This is Lisa Marie. Yes. Pole dancing, you know what, Joe's natural, I would love pole dancing.